Bayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Alright. Welcome attendees to Pamana 2030 campaign launch. Protektahan, alagaan, mahalin ang napakagandang at. For the first time, ICOMAS Philippines will be localizing the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs for the Philippine heritage. The United Nations Global Goals for Sustainable Development were adopted in 2015 to serve as an urgent call to action to end poverty, improve health and education, reduce inequality, and spur economic growth, all while tackling climate change and working to preserve our oceans, rivers, lands, forests, and local heritage. Before we start, some technical reminders. First, the campaign launch will be recorded for internal documentation and will be live on Facebook and YouTube. Second, make sure your complete names are shown so we can take attendance. Third, please mute audio during presentations, though you may open your microphone to speak during open forum and Q&A. Fourth, turn videos off during presentations, but please feel free to turn them back on during the open forum Q&A, and final photo. Fifth, if you have any questions during the presentation, please type in the chat box and they will be tackled during the open forum and Q&A. Lastly, please download the Pamana 2030 Zoom background for yourself and set your chosen SDG color as your background. I'll be sending the link in chat. That's it for our technical reminders. To officially open this program, I would like to introduce our moderator, Dr. Laya Bocarin Gonzalez, PhD, Policy Guidance Task Team Member of the SDGs Working Group. Dr. Bocarin Gonzalez is leading the programs and projects of the Nayong Pilipino Foundation. Prior to this engagement, she served as consultant for various institutions, creative hubs, and local and international projects. Bokirin has a Doctor of Philosophy in Philippine Studies and as a Goldman Sachs grant recipient, completed short, focused programs on the creative industries at the Institute of Media and Entertainment, New York, and Keio University, Japan. She is currently completing her fellowship in the International Center for the Study of the Preservation and Restoration of Cultural Property, or ICC-ROM's People-Centered Approaches to the Conservation of Nature and Culture World Heritage Leadership Program. Dr. Laya, the floor is now yours. Thank you so much for that warm introduction, Jay. A pleasant day to communities and heritage places all over the Philippine archipelago and throughout the world. 
This year, as we advance the decade of action to deliver the 17 Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs, we are tasked to gain a global momentum in undertaking the 2030 promise with a sense of urgency. We only have less than 10 years to intensify cooperation and mobilize state and local governments, civil society, enterprise, cultural communities, and all people to make the global goals our own. The International Council on Monuments and Sites, or ICOMOS Philippines, is currently working with partners in localizing the 17 Sustainable Development Goals for our Philippine heritage. So this is only the beginning of our journey towards our shared aspiration to lessen poverty for a more just and humane society, mitigate the effects of climate change, and build a peaceful world. ICOMOS Philippines told today's online launch of the Pamana 2030 initiative in support and recalibration of shared vision for the 17 SDGs. We will be joined by esteemed resource persons presenting the potentials of heritage to the SDGs, its inclusion in the United Nations Agenda 2030, and the mobilization for the Decade of Action. So everyone, we are glad that you are here with us to celebrate this day full of synergies. Now allow me to introduce the first speaker, Maria Cristina Paterno, President and Board of Trustee of ICOMOS Philippines. Ms. Paterno is an architectural conservator. She completed her Master of Science in Historic Preservation from the University of Pennsylvania before she founded her own firm. She worked at a conservation consultancy in New York. Projects include the United Nations Building Complex, Metropolitan Museum of Art, and Federal Reserve Bank. Returning to the Philippines, she co-founded the San Sebastian Basilica Conservation and Development Foundation as its executive and technical director. Ms. Paterno is a recipient of the Outstanding Manilan Award for her work at San Sebastian. Tina acts as the primary spokesperson of ECOMOS Philippines to various issues both locally and internationally. Everyone meet Ms. Tina Paterno. Thank you, Laya, for the warm welcome and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please allow me to give a brief introduction on our organization. Uh, can we have the slides, please? There we go. So ECOMOS Philippines is uh, part of a global organization. Uh, we work for the preservation and protection of heritage places. We work to promote theory, preservation theory, scientific methodology, and applied research to enable our heritage practitioners to better manage changes in heritage sites so that succeeding generations can enjoy authentic experience of our cultural heritage properties. Uh, our Philippine National Committee, next slide please, is part of a global organization in 153 countries through national and scientific committees and has heritage professionals of every kind. We have archeologists, structural engineers, architects, sociologists, historians, landscape architects, uh, urban planners, to name a few. ECOMOS is also an advisor to UNESCO on World Heritage Matters. Locally, what do we do? Next slide, please. Uh, some of our recent work include Um, we can't hear. Can you please unmute? Sorry. Um, so slide here. We some of our work includes a pre-disaster recovery planning program in Intramuros, and we invited eleven uh, major agencies and residents to develop a sustainable plan for disaster risk management. Uh, next slide, please. And if you could play it, there you go. Another one is a photogrammetry workshop where we empowered people from Aparitu Holo to document objects, their own um, objects and sites. This can be done with a cell phone and its output is as accurate as a measured drawing, but in 3D. 
Next slide, please. So we run talks and seminars on a broad range of subjects and speak out on issues, big and small, that affect our heritage. Uh, next slide, please. So those are our adv advocacy programs where we, we speak out. Uh, next slide, please. And we also work with schools and individual interns to further research in preservation. And if you see the gentleman on the right, uh, this is Kenneth Tua, our former intern, who leads the management of, SD of the SDG team today as an ECOMOS member. So congratulations to the SDG team. We look forward to the work you come out with on how best we can use the sustainable development goals, which is a sort of roadmap to, for the world to suit our local context. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, Tina. Now our next presenter, is none other than Attorney Maria Leonoria Rona Robredo, 14th and incumbent Vice President of the Philippines. Nikki Lenny was a seasoned lawyer before she stepped into the political arena in 2013 when she won as the representative of the 3rd District of Camarines Sur. She then led the crafting of the Office of the Vice President's flagship anti poverty program, Mat Buhay, an endeavor inspired by six key advocacy areas. That includes food security and nutrition, women empowerment, education, healthcare, rural development, and housing. It has benefited 185 communities around the country through the generosity of partner organizations and individuals, most of whom are from the private sector. She also launched Historia and Pagasa, a program that aims to spread hope and positivity by featuring extraordinary stories of Filipinos. Believing in the power of collaboration and faith in the people, Vice President Gibraltar vows to keep working to help her fellow Filipinos, especially those in the fringes of society. Philippines and the world, it is my honor to introduce VP Lenny. Hello to everyone joining us here today for the Pamana 2030 campaign launch. Our world today is markedly different from when the United Nations member states adopted the SDGs in 2015. COVID-19 has disrupted the way we live, the way we work, the way we learn. Plans have been put on hold, if not cancelled altogether. So many have died. So many have gone through the experience of doing all they can to save someone they love and still falling short. But even though our context has changed radically, the task at hand remains the same, to build a better and more sustainable future for all. The SDGs point us towards this horizon, mindful not only of those who are present today, but also of those who will come after us. To do this, we must embrace our interconnectedness, the heritage and culture we share as a people, and the history and values that bind us as a nation. To echo the call of the International Council on Monuments and Sites, and I quote, cultural heritage is not just monuments. It is identity, memory, and a sense of place. We must take up the challenge of conserving this fragile, non-renewable resource for current and future generations. Close school. This is why campaigns like this are important. By holding these conversations, you are actively preserving the rich history of our people, making sure that the many strangers who share this planet with us, and beyond that, the next generations to whom we will bequeath it, feel bound as one single human family sharing this one single world. Just by being here, we are getting more people involved, paving pathways for everyone to contribute to society 
and empowering our ranks. As you dive deeper in this advocacy and find others who share your values, continue to harness our interconnectedness. Listen to each other. Collaborate towards more innovation. Find other groups, harmonize your efforts, dream and plan, and move towards bigger goals. Together, we can pave more sustainable pathways towards the future and reach the better normal of our hopes. A world that is fairer, kinder, and more humane. Maraming salamat at mabuhay kayong lahat. And I couldn't agree more. Thank you for that, VP Lenny. Now, I have the happy task of introducing our keynote speaker, Professor Emeritus and Architect Sofia Colonia. Dr. Colonia is the former chairperson of the Sustainable Development Goals Working Group International from 2016 to 2017 and was an elected member of the ECOMOS International Board for 2008, 2011, and 2014. She's an architect, engineer, urban planner, with degrees on Master of Arts in History and Civilization, and a Doctor of Philosophy in Urban Geography in Paris. She is currently a Professor Emeritus at the National Technical University of Athens, where she has been teaching since 1982 at the undergraduate and postgraduate levels. She was responsible in a number of research programs concerning issues in the analysis and planning of historical centers, cities and settlements, development problems, and planning in urban areas. In the same institution, she was also a former director of the Department of Urban and Regional Planning and the Laboratory of Spatial Planning and Urban Development in the School of Architectural Engineering. Today, she is the elected vice president of the ECOMOS Hellenic National Committee and has been working on the preservation and protection of historical monuments and sites in Greece, Cyprus, Southeast Europe, and Mediterranean countries. Lastly, she is the current president of the Association of Greek Urbanists and Planners. Ladies and gentlemen, a virtual applause, please, for Professor Colonia. Good afternoon to all. Good morning from Athens, Greece. I'm very happy and very honored to be with you today. And uh, I like to wish you a, a great success to your effort on the, um, the launch of uh, Pamana. Um, can I share my screen, please? Okay, after almost three years of intense intergovernmental uh, negotiation, the United Nations State Summit on 2015 um, in New York closed with the outcome document transforming our world, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which proposed 17 SDGs, including a historic standalone goal on sustainable cities and human settlements, the goal 11, make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. The SDG 11 include, among others, the target 11.4 that was the result of a coordinated effort by many stakeholders interested in cultural heritage. It calls for making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable by strengthening efforts to protect and safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage. It is contained with the so-called urban SDG, a set of sustainable development targets related to cities and settlements. Because the heritage target 11.4 is located within the urban SDG, the elaboration of the role of heritage in the post-2015 development agenda is closely linked to the Habitat 3 process and the new urban agenda as well. Whether and how the cultural heritage aspects of uh, ESDGs, the new urban agenda and the other elements of the Agenda 2030 are conceived and then implemented from local, national to international level, will affect both the success of the Agenda 2030 itself, 
as well as the prospects for conserving the precious heritage resources of the earth. It should be noted that the concept of sustainability for architectural heritage is introduced by the Venice Charter of ECOMOS, uh, 1965. ECOMOS work is based on the principles in, in the Venice Charter, which remains a pioneer text, as it was the first to introduce the notion of sustainability for architectural heritage, declaring that monuments should be preserved and protected so that future generations can receive what the former ones have bequeathed from to humanity. This principle inspired important initiatives which ensued, such as the Water Heritage Convention ad adopted in November 1972 in Paris by the General Conference of UNESCO. It was a deeply pioneering step which innovates as it links nature and culture under the world heritage that needs to pass on and hand to our pro uh, uh, prosperity. Humanity agonizes for the lot of the natural environment while new global demands are on the rise concerning the quality of living safely equality in modern society, as well as the relation between developmental procedures and culture. It gradually becomes clear that culture is closely linked to, the, to development independently of any level of financial development and political givens of human societies. It is also realized that culture is the expression of each people creative spirit animating all fields of economic, productive, and social life. The World Decade of Cultural Development of UNESCO was of particular importance in providing that culture can become a social regulator and can be capitalized as development force. The World Conference of the Environment in Rio 92 was another milestone as Agenda 21 highlights the concept of sustainability and also recognizes that cultural heritage is not a renewable asset. Humanity was finally starting to realize that culture is a driving force behind development, while it was suggested that planning development should encompass the acknowledgement that the world heritage consists in both the natural and man-made environment. The definition of development in Article 3 of UNESCO Universal Declaration on Cultural Diversity 2001 is another important step starting that development is not only considered to be financial development, but also a means to achieve a more satisfactory mental, emotional, moral, and spiritual existence. The Johannesburg World Summit on Sustainable Development acknowledge cultural diversity as the fourth pillar of sustainable development, along with the traditional three pillars of economy, society, and environment. After the proposal of UNESCO, the, the, the role played by culture in development is further enhanced, noting that culture is the basic component of human development offered for financial development and the procession of developmental procedures. Rio, Rio 20 plus 20 moves in the same direction. As an advisor to UNESCO for World Heritage, ECOMOS works towards this direction consistently, aiming to connect and coordinate with other non-governmental and governmental organizations serving similar purposes. A series of decisions taken during the ECOMOS scientific meetings and conferences share the central idea of cultural sustainability. The 17th General Assembly and scientific symposium of ECOMOS took place in Paris um, under the theme Heritage, a Driver of Development. And it adopts the, the statement of principles and recommendation, as well as the Valletta principles for the safeguarding and management of historical cities, towns, and urban areas, proposed by the International Scientific Committee of um, Cities and Towns. 
Both documents highlight that uh, the relationship between cultural heritage and development should be considered an advantage, not only for the protection and its preservation and for propagation of its values, but mostly for societies, cultural, social, and financial development. The Paris Symposium broadly recognized through the documentation of five, uh, 500 scientific papers that heritage also uh, constitutes a crucial facet of uh, the developmental procedure and financial development. It was further acknowledged that in participating within the context of sustainable development, cultural heritage contributes to social cohesion, prosperity, creativity, and financial drive, and it contributes to promoting understanding among communities. The 18th um, General Assembly and Symposium of ECOMOS to, that took place in Florence, November 2014, under the, the topic Heritage and Landscape as Human Values, um, um, gave us the Florence uh, Declaration that encourages further questioning on uh, the ontology as well as the management procedure for cultural heritage. It is mostly, however, encouraging the dialogue on sustainable development, placing man at center say, stage, and it acknowledges that uh, through their cultural diversity, heritage and landscape values are conditions for the quality of human life, living. The ECOMOS um, resolution 37, uh, ensuring that culture and cultural heritage are acknowledged in the proposed goals and targets on sustainable development for the UN post-2015 United Nations a development agenda. And uh, it was asking the support of ECOMOS for the integration of cultural heritage in the post-2015 urban development agenda. Similar principles have been well expressed from ECOMOS in previous international documents and found in charters on safeguarding and protecting human rights and cultural heritage. After the, um, the, the approval and the decision on uh, Agenda 2030 in New York, um, ECOMOS uh, recognizing that uh, rapid urbanization, globalization, and attendant loss of human identity, excessive and intensive development, and increasing risks of disasters and conflict, including climate uh, change, um, impacts, present grave threats to the well-being of communities and the health of the environment. And uh, for these reasons, it is important that the countries of the world unanimously agreed to undertake a difficult global effort for the good of humanity and um, proposed the SDGs. And uh, after this decision, ECOMOS um, published his statement and uploaded this important action. In um, December um, 2017, in Delhi of India, ECOMOS had another resolution, very important. Um, and uh, this resolution was a very important step for ECOMOS work on, work on SDGs. Towards the implementation of Agenda 2030, and in particular, the objective 11.4, reaffirmed, ECOMOS reaffirmed the commitment of the membership and the collaboration with the UN Habitat, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, the United Cities and Global Governments, UCLG, ECROM, the Organization of World Cities, um, Heritage World Cities, and other relevant international and non-governmental organizations. This resolution invited all ECOMOS national and international scientific committees, as well as, as well as all individual and institutional members to make efforts to take relevant actions and develop projects with the framework of the ECOMOS action plan, cultural heritage and localizing the SDGs. Our friend um, Gabriel will explain further on this uh, document uh, later. 
Over the last decades, globalization in the market and in production methods, financial and political instability, armed conflict, and the transfer of populations between different regions and mainly towards the large cities demand new constructions and new working conditions in urban areas. Within this context, intangible values, such as genius loci, the uses of traditional urban spaces, the role of public space in urban living, special characters and identities, as well as different uh, socioeconomic as well as environmental factors are rendered vulnerable. They must therefore be preserved, promoted and taken into consideration in every future attempt to redesign space. Consequently, urban development that integrates cultural heritage is more sustainable, more diverse and more inclusive. It helps create green economies that enhance sustainability, provide opportunities for employment that help in poverty allevi alleviation and has the potential to unite people in participatory processes and to further goals to, of social cohesion and peace. In this context, new approaches and methods of planning and managing of historic cities emerge. An important condition for a successful way of planning and uh, managing of historic cities is not only the, the coding and promotion of creativity and cultural identity, but also the recognition of the right of the inhabitants to their cultural heritage. The historical urban landscape proposed by UNESCO corresponds appropriately to reading complex modern urban realities. UNESCO's adoption and promotion of the historical urban landscape on 2011 proposed the integration of cultural values, tangible and intangible, into an integrated urban strategy. Hall considers infrastructures above and below ground, perceptions and visual relationships, as well as the social and economic data of cities and urban areas. An integrated approach is implemented for identification, assessment, conservation, and management of historic urban landscapes within an overall sustainable development framework. ECOMOS SDG's working group is working not only for the, the goal 11, but uh, um, likes to um, examine some other important goals as the SDG 4 on education, SDG 8 on work and economic growth, SDG 12 on consumption and uh, production. And now, um, with um, this very important document that um, it will be presented in analytically by Gabriel a little later, the policy guidance um, that uh, was prepared by um, ECOMOS um, uh, Working Group uh, is uh, working on five P's, people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. That is mean the knowledge and resources transmitted through heritage to achieve the well-being of people, a culture, nature approach and landscape-based solution to achieve the well-being of the planet, the shared resources um, embodied in heritage to achieve prosperity of communities, the connecting power of heritage for social cohesion and dialogue to achieve peace within and among societies, the shared medium of heritage and its connections uh, with all aspects of human that to create partnership. That is perhaps the most important um, topic in this uh, discussion. I would like to thank you very much for your attention and I'd like to wish you success to uh, Pamana launch. Thank you very much. Thank you for that encouragement and thank you for sharing these global perspectives for the SDGs, Dr. Colonia. And not only that, but the immediate action points that have to be taken not only by decision makers, but equally important, the communities of place, 
practice and interest in heritage places and cultural landscapes. Indeed, heritage promotes the understanding of communities and perhaps during this time of crisis, when humanity is, in your words, agonizing the most, this is what we need to make our existence more bearable. Now allow me to introduce our next speaker, landscape architect Gabriel Victor Caballero. He is the focal point person for the SDGs for ECOMOS and acts as facilitator and coordinator for ECOMOS work in relation to the global SDGs in the policy arena. He coordinates the activities of the SDG working group, develops ideas and monitors progress to support the implementation of the ECOMOS action plan for cultural heritage and localizing the SDGs. Architect Caballero is also an expert member of the International Scientific Committee on Cultural Landscapes and specializes on sensitive landscape design interventions, research, cultural nature linkages, and world heritage evaluations in rapidly urbanizing areas in Asia. Everyone, let us welcome Gabriel Caballero. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Laia. Let me just uh, uh, share my slide. Yeah. Uh, so uh, thanks uh, for that introduction, and thank you to ECOMOS Philippines for the invitation. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Uh, to our colleagues uh, from other time zones, uh, good morning and good evening to you. I'm really excited uh, about this conversation, as I believe that we are at the starting point where something very important will happen that we connect Filipino heritage, the sustainable development goals, and the needs of various actors to work together for the betterment of society. The title of my presentation is Activating Heritage as a Driver and Enabler of Sustainability for the Decade of Action. So before I begin, uh, let me introduce the ECOMOS Sustainable Development Goals Working Group, established as an interdisciplinary task force by the ECOMOS Scientific Council during the 18th General Assembly in 2014. Can the SDGs. We the presentation? Sorry? Are you Sorry, sharing I, your screen? I, I am. Hold on. Let me stop sharing again and then let's share again. Okay. Let me do that. Can you see that? Yeah. Hold on. Yes. Let me yes. go back to this. Yeah. So it was established in 2014 and then the SDGs working group coordinates ECMOS's response to the Agenda 2030 through the advocacy, policy, and localizing of the SDGs. The working group acts as a platform for recognition, mainstreaming, the effective contribution of cultural heritage as a driver and enabler of sustainable development in the process of implementing the UN Agenda 23. It does this by driving and coordinating the localizing and monitoring of the SDGs based on target 11.4, the strengthened efforts to protect and safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage to make our cities inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. ECOMOS also has partnered with UN Habitat in the implementation of the new urban agenda, and it actively supports UNESCO and the state parties in the application of the 2015 World Heritage and Sustainable Development Policy and the 2011 recommendation of the historic urban landscape, which uh, Sophia just mentioned earlier. On the right side are some of our activities uh, um, that we, we've done for the last few years. We go to the high level political forum in New York uh, for the engagement of the um, SDGs. Uh, we also uh, um, discuss with the at the urban World Urban Forum for UN Habitat, and I think next year will, it will happen in Poland. And every year we do report to the UNESCO World Heritage Committee meetings in um, for the uh, issues of heritage and sustainable development. So Sophia has elaborated this, and I will just go quite quickly that the ECOMOS has been thinking about the relationship of development and heritage even before the Agenda 2030 was conceptualized. In 2011, ECMOS has, uh, had uh, done the Paris Declaration of Heritage as a Driver of Development, which identified the following. Heritage has inherent values that are connected to cultural and social and economic development of communities. ECOMOS promotes a development process that incorporates tangible and intangible heritage as a vital aspect of sustainability and gives a human face to development. And we recognize that heritage plays a role in social cohesion, well-being, creativity, and economic appeal, and forms a crucial aspect of the development process. 
Ika must also identify the need of heritage to be part of the a bigger conversations, to be more meaningful to communities and future societies. And uh, these are the topics that were discussed at that um, meeting. So we are heritage needs to be part of regional development, to be part of uh, the construction industry to create beautiful buildings, tourism development, economics, and social development. This uh, was a collection of experiences of, uh, and knowledge of 1,150 participants from 106 countries that synthesized their findings in the Paris Declaration. After the formation of the 17 SDGs in 2015, where the target 11.4 was defined, ECOMOS recognized the important role of cultural heritage in urban sustainability. Uh, in 2016, um, Andrew Potts, Jeff Sewell, and Jyoti Hashagarhar presented at the third uh, summit of housing and sustainable urban development or Habitat 3 in Quito, Ecuador, to talk about target 11.4 um, and strengthening efforts to protect and safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage and linking that heritage to sustainable urban development for both natural and cultural heritage. This concept note highlights the emerging need for a paradigm shift where culture and cultural heritage and landscapes play a broader and critical role in the achievement of the new humanistic and ecological paradigm of a sustainable city. It argues that integration of culture and cultural heritage into urban development plans and policies, as well as enhancing sustainability of urban areas through heritage. Now in 2017, Istanbul in Istanbul, the Sustainable Development Goals Task Force led by Ege Yildirim and the chair uh, who's here today, Sofia Colonias, defined the three action areas for ECMOS, which is organizing, mobilizing internally with ECMOS and develop external partnerships, localizing, which is we are what we're doing now, which is providing guidance, support and leadership to stakeholders at all levels and across sectors, encouraging heritage related policies, strategies, tools and tools. Rather and monitoring, uh, supporting development and application of indicators of progress. So this action plan became the building block of how we respond to heritage and the SDGs now. As a global heritage organization, ECMOS paves the way for various topics like this to be mainstreamed in heritage practices in many countries. Now, um, this, uh, as part of our contribution to the UN Decade of Action, uh, ECMOS released the document earlier this year entitled Heritage and the Sustainable Development Goals, Policy Guidance for Heritage and Development Actors, which is a first and key step in illustrating the positive contribution of heritage to all the SDGs. It addresses challenges and points heritage practices. Uh, there are some heritage practices that might be at odds with some principles from the SDGs. It provides simple information, baseline data, policy statements and recommendations, which illustrates examples and heritage on each of the goals. The launch that we are having now with Pamana 2030 is a continuation of this process as ECMOS Philippines looks into having more local conversations of how heritage and the SDGs to find gaps and identify best practices in the local context in relationship to Filipino heritage and the SDGs. Now from 2011 to now, right? this is 10 years and that 10 years has been a process of distillation. We have mapped the thoughts of many practitioners of, of heritage, looking at tangible and intangible heritage and its role to communities. As you can see here, this is one place, but it is really tangible, intangible and communities coming together. And that is um, synthesized in 2015, the 2015 agenda, with, which was a global political initiative by the UN, where many countries and various non-government actors came together and eventually defined one target of heritage for heritage protection out of 169 targets. This is a means of defining the essence of what we need to do for the benefit of all. However, after 2015, we continue to recognize that, that the role of heritage cannot be boxed into one SDG target as it forms part of cultural life of people and can serve as a driver and enabler of all the SDGs. It forms part of culture, which we believe is one of the main pillars of sustainable development. And it is important to highlight that the protection of heritage is inherently an act of sustainability. As the lifespan of materials and places are extended and there is sensitive, well-thought interventions that can happen. 
Protecting cultural landscapes and natural heritage also contributes heavily to environmental resilience. So, okay, so I will break this down now a little bit more. So why is this conversation important? So as a side note, uh, my father, when we were uh, growing up, uh, we, he would ask us basic questions when we discuss pertinent issues in the dining table. And I will say this in Tagalog for, for most people to understand. So, nakakain ba yan? Nakaka ka ba dyan? Or gaganda ba ang buhay natin dahil dyan? So these are questions that are, are, that are, are very, very valid. And I can say to him now that heritage is important because of the points that I will share with you. So to make this simple, if you're not sure of what the 17 SDGs are and the 169 targets, you only need to remember the five Ps, which is planet, people, uh, prosperity, uh, peace, and partnerships. Now, I will explain this a little bit more, uh, how heritage links to these five Ps. So planet, right? Protecting landscapes and natural heritage contributes to the protection of the earth. Traditional agricultural practice provides us food. Their traditional views of management and management systems embedded in intangible heritage in indigenous peoples and rural communities that are sources of knowledge that, com can, that can combat climate change. This picture here, the Anangu people, the traditional owners of the land in Uluru Kata in Australia, have lived for thousands of years and have developed ways of living in harsh desert environments. And such knowledge is now important in the world where climate change, we, we are affected by climate change. People. So heritage forms part of our identities, values, and norms that define us. A study that was done by U.S. ECOMOS in 2016 recognized that places of the civil rights movement are important legacies that need to be protected. With rising issues of polarized views, it is important to identify these places that remind us of the value of human rights and of gender equality and the need for cultural education for tolerance. Here is a picture of the Stonewall Inn, which became the central point of the violent riots in 1969 that led to the modern fight of LGBT rights in the USA. Um, next one is prosperity. Tourism is one of the key drivers of economic growth. My colleague uh, Brielle Lee Singh and Chen Min Sias and I are uh, finishing a research on that that shows that tourism contributes 24.6% of the Philippine economy in 2019 before COVID. However, such growth needs to look at sustainability in order not to destroy the sites. This is a photo of Angkor Wat in Cambodia before the pandemic, and it shows the amount of people that can come into a site, damaging the heritage values of the place. Um, next one is peace. Uh, the destruction of heritage sites are used as a means of signifying war and ideological beliefs. Here is an old photo of the Buddha at the Bamiyan Valley in Afghanistan, that was the target of destruction by the Taliban, which destroyed it in two, uh, 2001. It was inscribed in the World Heritage List in UNESCO in 2003 as a means of saving the site. But with the rise of the Taliban's back to power, it makes us wonder if the site's safety um, uh, and what will happen it on, of it in the future. Now, partnerships. Uh, collaborations with um, other artists, non-heritage partners, government actors, and civil society creates uh, new dimensions of seeing and protecting heritage. Here is a photo of, from Culture Action Europe exploring digital transformations in, heritage, in the heritage sector and the potential to reach new audiences and tell new stories in a digital nation. Museums are in the forefront of this change. So uh, I can also give you examples in the Philippines that uh, we have really, really a lot of example how heritage contributes to particular SDGs. So for, for SDG 2 with, with zero hunger, the efforts of Sagada, um, uh, Sustainable Sagada, now called Sustainable Towns by Tracy Santiago, has allowed farmers in the Sagada area to transition from a tourism-focused economy to go back to food production-based economy to connect farmers to consumers in Manila during the pandemic. Uh, SDG 13 on climate action, the Ivitan houses in Batanes has been built with storms in mind. They are made of very thick limestone walls and, and limestone and coral walls that allows them to withstand strong winds. Such kind of construction can be a source of inspiration as we face even stronger storms in the future. 
SDG 7 on uh, affordable energy and um, uh, clean, affordable and clean energy. Traditional architecture of Bayanabato are well equipped for affordable energy. It uses passive cooling and those small windows that you see here called ventanillas are adaptations that have been developed in traditional houses to aid in good airflow. These types of designs could be integrated to new building construction as well as minimize air conditioning. Now SDG 4 on equality education. Uh, conceptualized in 1995, the School of Living Traditions by NCCA encourages a continuing and balanced development which highlights the role of indigenous people in promoting living traditions. These are community managed centers of learning where cultural masters and specialists transmit to the community the value of their culture. It also wants to integrate such uh, education in local school curricula. SDG 14 and 15. This is something that I learned recently in our ECOMOS focus uh, uh, group discussions, which is um, shared by our colleague, uh, Kate Lim. The Tagbanwas of Palawan has uh, traditional practices of only taking what they need on a daily basis, as they believe that the bounty of nature, nature should not be abused. However, with climate change, these perspectives are now being challenged as more resources, uh, uh, the, the more sources of food and water are diminishing. There are, however, good news for the Tagbanwa. The solar energy is now being used by, by the people as a means of free energy in their settlement. And then lastly, as another example, uh, SDG 8 on decent work and economic growth, Ex Escuela Taller de Filipinas Foundation originated from Spain in the 1980s as its training ground for skilled workers uh, came to Manila in 2009 and provides out of school youth on practical skills to become craftsmen to support heritage conservation in the Philippines. These are just examples and I'm sure that Filipinos in the audience will know other ideas of how heritage can help particular types of SDGs. Now, what are the challenges that we face? Uh, COVID-19 has affected the capacity of many sites and in the heritage sector, or more so the tourism sector because of the global disruption. Uh, mobilizing on sites um, is not easy and priorities are changing. Climate change is here and affects many heritage sites. In a study that Lydia Lupesco and I recently concluded in the SDGs working group, we have identified that 145 sites in the World Heritage List are already affected by various climatic issues from drought, flooding, desertification, and temperature change, and many more. Around 70% of the sites are, uh, that are affected by climate change are cultural sites but heritage practitioners have not yet identified appropriate climate actions to deal with these issues. Sometimes they are just also unaware of the issues at hand. So uh, there's also the, the big issue of heritage practitioners being ill-equipped to solve broader issues of society. Uh, our work is specialized and we fail to see how we can contribute to discussions on social justice, on environmental protection and economic development. There are daunting, uh, these are daunting concepts, and I think um, uh, to think of, and there are so many factors to consider. However, uh, there are opportunities to simplify these discussions as we break down the role of heritage um, in one P at a time. You know, we've discussed about the five P's earlier. Now, dissecting the entangled, interrelated concepts of the SDGs allows people to engage with it easier. For example, by reaching out to various local actors and asking them very specific questions like, how much do heritage contribute to your local economy? Or what types of traditional and modern techniques in construction do you use? Or how many women are employed? Or, uh, or having targeted but sometimes not non-heritage questions makes this conversation a little bit easier to unravel. The UN SDGs is all about data collection, and we need to collect quantitative data so that we can engage with relevant SDG actors. Although much research of heritage focus in qualitative data, we need to provide more numbers that allow us uh, others to engage with us. Asking how much tourism funding comes into a heritage site versus how much heritage conservation money is allowed to repair these sites is one data we need to look into. And then the third one is um, 
with regards to the discussions of the SDGs, we can now reach to more national agencies to engage. The whole government of the Philippines is gearing up for the Ambition 2040, Matatag, Maginhawa, and Panatag de Buhay. And putting the, our conversation to the national priorities allows us to engage further. This year, the Philippines is doing its voluntary national review to the United Nations for SDGs 4, 5, 14, 15, and 17. And I hope that NEDA can provide some information to civil society, which hopefully uh, uh, ECMOS can help review. Lastly, for us to be more relevant is to find the right space to engage. This starts with asking the right questions and identifying the right information to speak to various actors to come to a common ground. At this point, uh, at this de decade of action, heritage, uh, I believe, can be a solution and a driver of sustainable development if we manage to go beyond the challenges and think outside the box. So various people, um, heritage actors in ECOMOS are already working to localize the discussion of heritage in the SDGs. Here are just examples of my colleagues in the SDGs working group. Uh, and they have started to engage in various parts of the world, in Scotland, in Russia, in Bahrain, in Slovenia. Uh, the SDGs working group has now um, other um, work, smaller working groups in uh, national committees in, in Nigeria as well. Um, and the policy guidance is also being translated in other languages for easy engagement in Arabic, in Persian, in Turkish, in Polish, and Portuguese. I'm glad that you are all here today. Uh, we're now 130 people in Zoom and many, many more in Facebook. And I'm glad that you're, uh, you're here with ECOMOS Philippines in uh, this launch of Pomana 2030. Protectahan, alagaan, mahalin, and ang napakbendeng atin. Um, um, as we start uh, these conversations, ICMAS Philippines has already started uh, our focus group discussions. So, as part of this uh, process, um, we have already engaged uh, various national actors in these uh, discussions. We've uh, spoken to NCCA, uh, to UNESCO Philippines, who I believe is also here. And we've engaged with the local actors and LGUs. Um, we've had uh, conversations with Guyan, Bataan, the Bangsamore Autonomous Region, Batanes, Sagay, Vegan, Tawi Tawi, Manila, Quezon City, uh, Quezon rather, and S S South Cotabado and Pangasinan. And various practitioners are looking at um, various lenses of heritage. We've had colleagues from the climate change, underwater heritage, um, um, uh, intangible heritage that have also joined us. And we have also engaged uh, other actors, non-heritage actors, which is, uh, let's say, the environmental planners from PIET. Um, right now, I just wanted to provide uh, some key points on what we've discussed so far. Um, one of it is that um, there are identified success stories in LGUs that look at sustainable development in heritage towns, but it usually happens by chance and not as deliberate efforts. Next one is climate change issues um, and tangible and intangible heritage are not much discussed in the Philippines. They are seen as separate um, types of discussions. And the third one is uh, funds derived from tourism her for heritage sites do not support heritage conservation in general. They are handled by two different national agencies. And the uh, last one is LGUs, national agencies, uh, civil society, and private companies need to come together to strengthen the links uh, between each other. So as uh, uh, we end, uh, we need everyone to be part of this discussion. I'm going back to one of my first statements that, uh, that heritage forms part of cultural life. We're actually all stakeholders of heritage. It's protection and links to the achievement of the sustainable development goals becomes part of our collective responsibility. Here are some pictures of people that you may know in and outside of the heritage sector. And we, we hope that you can be ambassadors too. Even if you're coming from the national agencies, the her you're a heritage practitioner, researcher, uh, from part of the LGU, an artist, private companies, non-heritage actors, indigenous communities, young people, and just the, the typical citizen, we are all called to mobilize for heritage and engage in this decade of action. Lastly, if you would like to know more about the work of the SDGs working group, Information can be found in ECOMOS uh, in the YouTube channel where you can sh we showcase various SDGs in its relation to, to heritage. And ECOMOS International, we have already started collecting various initiatives from all over the globe on how heritage connects with the SDGs. And you can also follow us on Twitter to, uh, to get the international uh, updates on issues. 
And maraming salamat po. I will end here and my email is included if you want to know more. Thank you very much. That was an insightful presentation. Thank you, Gab. And I guess many of those working in the field of heritage as professionals and advocates resonate with what you shared. Most of our lives, we have been convincing decision makers and the general public why our shared heritage is important to all, how traditional knowledge and practices can be a source of policy decisions for the common good, and how heritage, in fact, cuts across the SDGs, one P at a time. Now allow me to introduce our final presenter. Kenneth Javier Tua is the Policy Guidance Manager and Task Team Coordinator of the National Sustainable Development Goals Working Group. He's a licensed architect and a sustainable territorial development consultant. He has acquired professional certifications in sustainability, sustainable development, and innovation programs in Singapore, Thailand, and South Korea. Recently, he graduated as a fully funded postgraduate scholar at the Erasmus Mundus Joint Master Degree in Dynamics of Cultural Landscape, Heritage, Memory, and Conflictualities, and Master of Arts in Cultural Diplomacy and International Relations. He is also an expert member of the International Scientific Committee on Cultural Landscapes. The virtual floor is yours, Architect Kenneth. Thank you very much, Dr. Laya, for that kind introduction. I'm going to share some screen. Can you see the full screen of the presentation? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Again, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Laya. That's an honor to be introduced by you. Um, and now we will talk about more the SDGs at the national and local level. Okay, to start, um, good day to everyone, to all viewers of Pamana 2030 campaign launch, to our government agencies who are here today, our from local government units, NGOs, um, colleges and universities actually, and of course, everyone, the general public. Again, I'm Kenneth Tua. And I, I will present on the prospects for Philippine heritage and the sustainable development goals or SDGs. Remember SDGs because we're going to use that, that three acronym letter word over and over again so that we don't need to keep on repeating the whole world of that. As I come as Philippines SDGs Working Group or SDGs WG, we'll be presenting the efforts and prospects for the SDGs in the Philippines in terms of heritage. The agenda for this presentation is divided into three parts. First is introduction of expert and associate members of the working group so that everyone will be well-versed who are the people that they can communicate in this uh, venture. The efforts of ICOMAS Philippines in, in achieving the SDGs are the sustainable development, in fact, for the past years and lastly the prospects for initiatives anchored in heritage conservation and the sdgs in the philippines as what my predecessor presenters um, have already explained to you i will go briefly about what is the sdgs working group we are the people who coordinate icomos response to the 2030 agenda through advocacy policy and localizing of the SDGs. Mainly our vision is to have the recognition, mainstreaming and effective contribution of cultural heritage as a driver and enabler of sustainable development in the process of implementing the United Nations Agenda 2030 and Sustainable Development Goals. Lastly, our mission are to achieve a coordinative and effective process of advocacy for the localization and monitoring of the UN SDGs and UN Habitat's new urban agenda as have been greatly explained by Dr. Colonia. From the perspectives of cultural heritage, focusing on target 11.4 initially, which is to strengthen efforts to protect and safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage. This is to make our cities inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Now, within the framework, of course, of ICOMOS mandate and through collaboration with our strategic partners, such as IUCN, ICCRM, UNESCO, and many more. Lastly, to embed the contribution of ICOMOS in protecting and safeguard, 
safeguarding the world's cultural heritage as a vital component of all 17 SDG targets and its 169 sub-targets. Now I'm going to introduce all of our members and our expert members uh, who are TAS team and SLOCA members of the SDGs Working Group. The first, which you have already seen earlier, is uh, Mr. Gabriel Caballero, who is our focal point for the UN SDGs of ICOMOS and acts as a facilitator and coordinator for ICOMOS work in relation to the global sustainable development policy arena. Of course, he coordinates the activities of the working group, develops ideas and monitors progress to support the implementation of ICOMOS action plan for cultural heritage and localizing the sustainable development goals. Our, mod our moderator today, who is also none other than Dr. Lai Bokirin, who has a Doctor of Philosophy in Philippine Studies and is currently leading the Heritage Space Program of the recently reformed Nayong Filipino Foundation. This also includes the conceptualization and strategic implementation of programs for a museum of ethnographic collections and a creative hub in the set plant urban forest. She has also have been for years an amazing curator in many institutions and government agencies. Next is Ms. April Dupeño, who is currently a Doctor of Philosophy candidate for developmental studies. She is a full-time faculty at the Department of International Studies for Eastern University Manila and a certified guest service professional or CGSP. She is an experienced lecturer, trainer, and a freelance tour guide for almost 20 years with demonstrated history of working in the education management non-governmental institutions, and tourism and hospitality industry. We have Ms. Chris Justin Ogalino, who is a landscape architect, environmental planner, and a certified professional and assessor for the Philippine Green Building Council, Building for Ecologically Responsive Design Excellence, or BERDE program. She is also part of the Board of Directors for Philippine Institute of Environmental Planners, NCR, for 2021 to 2022. And for this last for this slide is Mrs. Chen Reyes Mancias, who is a tourism and environmental planner who has been providing technical assistance to local governments, NGOs, national government agencies, and private companies on tourism planning and ecotourism development for almost 20 years. And for the last set of members, is first Ms. Caroline Marie Quinto Leasing, who is an archaeologist, licensed interior designer, visual artist, who has worked in print and broadcast media. And as an, and as an archaeologist, she specializes in cultural heritage management of materials, sites of deep history, and has been studying the landscape and environment of archaeological heritage management in the Philippines for the last 10 years. She is currently part of the Kalinga Archaeological Expedition Team. We have Sir Architect Harvey Vasquez, a licensed architect in the Philippines with 16 years of experience, who has also has international exposure gained in the United Arab Emirates and Singapore. He uh, is the managing partner at Kalamaan Design Studio and a full-time professional faculty at the De La Salle College of St. Benil here in Manila. We have Mr. Nick Hermono, the co-founder and president for the Youth for Pangasinan Heritage and serves as the focal person of the Center for Pangasinan Studies and a member of the Culture and Arts Division of the Provincial Tourism and Cultural Affairs Office of the Provincial Government of Pangasinan. Joining us also today are in the group or in the team is Ms. Bria Leasing, who is an intern for the Cultural Heritage Indicators for Sustainable Tourism and also a lecturer at the Department of History at Ateneo de Manila University, as well as Mr. Jake Advincola, who is also our one of our researchers, who is now localizing the, the ICOMAS Philippines Policy Guidance Information Sheet and is a current student of the Master of, Master of Arts in Philippine Studies at UP Diniman. And yours truly, I'm Kenneth Tu, I'm an architect and a sustainable territorial development consultant who act as the task team coordinator of this working group. As part of the localization of the Pamana 2030, and like all the national committees worldwide of ICOMAS, uh, we are the team who will be localizing the SDGs through 
the project that I'm going to introduce to you later on. So far, um, there are there have been some SDGs working group who are doing great effort, and one of those is the Philippines and Netherlands. And so, of course, everyone is of course following this kind of direction. Since 20 or 2013, ICOMAS Philippines has briefly touched the sustainable development goals even before its in inception. As you can see in these slides, these are some of the efforts that we have actually linked and connected to the SDGs even before its um, establishment. Some of the efforts are, first is for SDG 4, quality education, where a majority of our efforts are pulled. We have been providing seminars with speakers from both international and local, of course, even before the pandemic and currently during the pandemic, in cooperation with higher education institutions. We, all, we are also hosting relevant discussion on heritage by pairing ICOMAS expert members with students to present their theses. This is our way of pass, passing the torch of knowledge to the youth. For SDG 8, Decent Work and Economic Growth, we equip professionals with field school, field, field, field school programs, wherein in the same program, SDG 9, Industry, Innovation, and Infrastructure, we have also achieved, due to the capacity, capacity building, with the state-of-the-art and innovative technologies such as photogrammetry and lighting acoustics for heritage conservation, as what our president earlier shared to you. And the SDG 10, Reduce Inequalities, from time to time, we provide scholarships for outstanding aspiring young heritage practitioners from heritage field and non-heritage field, thus contributing to inclusivity. For SDG 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions, together with our partners such as the Heritage Conservation Society and more, we have been, we have been releasing joint statements to maintain peace in the country's cultural heritage and, and to create mutual understanding. And recently, um, to a non-heritage organization, Move As One Coalition, as we release a position paper for the, the Parix issue. And lastly, SDG 17, Partnerships for the Goals. We've shown strong cooperation with public and private stakeholders in the protection of heritage, as well as improving access to knowledge and ideas through joint products, such as the Philippine Heritage Chapter. Of course, recently at the international level, we have contributed to the recent policy guidance of ICOMAS International by providing feedbacks for the overall document consultation and also providing the case study for SDG 11, thus highlighting ICOMAS Philippines efforts. Since the conception of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, ICOMOS Philippines was not able to fully integrate and align its programs and activities to, to the 17 SDGs. Albeit the 2030 Agenda has briefly touched many projects throughout the years, this is an opportunity for our organization, together with our stakeholders here today, to recalibrate and prioritize further these goals, achieving a more localized approach in the protection of the Philippines' cultural natural heritage for the SDGs. With this said, we have been pushing efforts for the Philippine heritage to adopt the sustainable development goals. Like today, one of our key indicator of success is to have the campaign launch, launch this year and which we are currently having now. And specifically, we are going to, um, we are going to undertake a project which is to produce the localized ICOMAS International Policy Guidance, in which we're currently now having a working title of Philippine Cultural Heritage and the Sustainable Development Goals, Policy Guidance for Heritage and All Development Actors. Among the many prospects for the F of the 17 SDGs and the Philippine Heritage, ICOMAS Philippines will be undertaking the localization through the policy guidance document. And this is the first time officially that we will be sharing this initiative and endeavor to the public. We will now be briefly talking about the policy guidance document. Again, ICOMAS Philippines affirms its commitment through the localization of the SDGs and calls for the acceleration of the sustainable solutions through heritage, together with all development actors through this policy guidance. 
ECOMAS Philippines policy guidance document vision is to have a local policy guidance that holistically tackles present and evolving heritage issues through and towards sustainable development. The mission is to empower heritage and all development actors to solve sustainability challenges of the Philippine heritage with measurable impacts and multidimensional perspectives. And the document's guiding values are sustainability-driven, diversity, inclusivity, empathy, and professionalism. The aim of this policy guidance document is twofold. First is to engage development actors and raise awareness of the potential contribution of heritage practices and programs to the development, to the sustainable development processes and guide ICOMAS members, heritage and development professionals at large in adopting a sustainable development perspective in their heritage practices and aligning them to the 17 SDGs. Therefore, this represents the continuous attempt and effort from the first policy guidance and to localize the document in providing a policy framework for all actors, national and local governments in the Philippines. Of course, with a specific focus to our local government units. This also includes local and expert organizations, businesses, civil society, local communities, minority groups, and the likes. Like the ICOMAS International, International Policy Guidance, which was released in March 2021, this um, Philippine policy guidance that we're currently crafting will also consist at least 17 case profiles that tackles practices, programs, and projects on the ground. This will have the following um, proposed parts of the, of the, of the document, is to have the SDG, SDG goal indicator, to have the baseline data, the policy statement that which was translated from international to local, which is for the Philippines, to choose notable projects, practices, or, or programs that we have been identified and into, into showing in and giving it as an example for case profile or case profiles while tackling and showing which of the SDGs were addressed through measurable impacts and sustainable takeaways. And lastly, of course, to have the photos for evidences and proof. The goal of the Philippine policy guidance document is to localize and adapt the country's rich heritage in setting and providing baseline policy statements and case profiles centered on grassroots level interventions and discourse. We are now currently looking at different measurable impacts and sustainable takeaways that we, which can be found and can be in addition to the recommendations of the current document that we're currently crafting. Now this document, we have already, um, after a lot of um, discussions and meetings, we have um, identified some of the potential key areas of impacts and interventions that, that, that this policy guidance document may provide to the all development actors. First is cultural, to address gaps in the culture and heritage sector and emphasize multidimensional and measurable solutions. Institutional, support government infrastructure systems and establish synergy within national and local communities through heritage. Social environmental, protect the built natural and social cultural environments for moderated economic development, such as, but not limited to, sustainable cultural tourism. Lastly, financial, to increase regenerative heritage practices, programs, and projects towards financial stability and sustainable territorial development. As what Sir Gab had mentioned in his presentation, we started holding the focus group discussions or FGDs this third quarter. These are centered on the five Ps, and I will reiterate, people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnerships in addressing all the 17 SDGs as an initiative and will serve as a platform of discourse on at least building the foundation of the policy guidance documents. Specifically, we're looking at the formulation of the baseline and policy statements. Resource person and participants who joined our came from our, our government agencies, local government units, NGOs, professional organizations, et cetera, 
and there are some as you can see on the slides. We are already done with people, planet, and prosperity, and we are yet to tackle peace and partnerships, which are centered on human rights-based approach and synergy of shared heritage. These are some of the initial um, efforts that we're currently doing, and there are much more to come in this three-year project and plan. Indeed, this three-year project of ICOMAS Philippines policy guidance document is part of a bigger picture and goal, and that is to campaign for the United Nations Agenda 2030 through ICOMAS Philippines Pamana 2030. At the moment, we, ICOMAS Philippines, is looking for projects and programs integrating heritage with the SDGs. We invite everyone to collaborate and partner with us. So thankfully, join Pamana 2030 campaign. And specifically, some of the ways that the local government, local government units, units that, we are, that we are being joined today and the general public can contribute to the Pamana 2030 campaign is by mobilizing and integrating the 17 SDGs in our Philippine heritage through the following collaborations and partnerships. We would like to ask for development actors to collaborate with heritage organizations such as ICOMOS, UNESCO, Heritage Conservation Society, Escuela Tarlier, Renacimiento Manila, and many more. Remember that we need to resonate synergized efforts for resounding and sustainable solutions. Of course, the policy guidance document. Take note that your heritage activities with SDGs as the core goal and values either current or incoming, may also be eligible to our call or invite for case profiles for the policy guidance document this coming 2022. We will screen case profiles that showcases notable practices, programs, and projects across the Philippines from Luzon, besides Mindanao. So please kindly stay tuned and we will, uh, um, we will have an announcement about this. Activate and establish. I just wanted to share that, and this is a credible source from one of our researchers. Did you know that local governments with the most successful heritage conservation practices, projects, and programs can be found in Vigan, Batanes, Bataan, and Guian? Now, the question is why and how? And this is because they have activated their local heritage affairs offices. Therefore, we urge LGUs who haven't created or mobilized yet their heritage offices to finally establish theirs and resort and resurface your local heritage for your people. Lastly, be concerned and be informed. As a heritage advocate and a cultural worker, it is not only our responsibility, but also our duty to protect our heritage, whatever kind it is, tangible, intangible, natural, cultural, living, all types of heritage. We must be, always be con concerned and informed so that it will not get left behind. Also, by integrating the SDGs to your projects, we, the SDGs Working Group, will engage to you and will give you the opportunity and privilege to use the official campaign logo, signifying that your project and or program is contributing to the cause of the International Council of Monuments and Sites to accelerate the SDGs. Of course, detailed partnerships are very much welcome for our Philippine heritage. During our soft launch of these policy guidance document and these efforts, we have actually um, engaged with two activities. One for internal, which is a project of our expert member, architect Claudia Montero, on the second ICOMOS Philippine Student Symposium, and an external event with Youth for Pangasinan Heritage, which is, the which is the Tower Talk Series. We highly recommend that all heritage activities that you will be involved should consider and apply the SDGs, not only because of the policy guidance document, but because it will contribute to the acceleration of the sustainable solutions to the world's biggest challenges, particularly in our own heritage, ranging from poverty, gender, to climate change, inequality, and closing the finance gap. And that concludes um, our working group's presentation. In behalf of the ICOMAS Philippines SDGs Working Group, we would like to thank everyone for your time and kind attention. Have a nice day. Thank you for that insightful presentation, Architect Kenneth. Um, before we proceed to the final portion of Pamana 2030, let us first take the time to watch this video from Pool of Path, our creative partner for the launch in cooperation with the ICOMAS Philippines communications team. 
To know more about them, kindly check their Facebook page and Instagram. I'll send the link in chat. There we have it. Uh, thank you very much, Pool of Pack, for collaborating with our communications team. Again, kindly check their Facebook and Instagram page, Pool of Pack. We will now be having an open forum and Q&A with the speakers. Please send your questions in the chat box of our Zoom. Dr. Sophia, are you there? I am here. I'm trying uh, to. I am here. I, I'm trying to, to see the questions if there are some. Uh, this first question is addressed to you uh, from uh, Facebook. Uh, they wanted to know. How can small towns be more sustainable? Um, it is a, a very, very large question because there are many, many um, points of view. But um, the, uh, the small towns and um, um, villages uh, have to, to have a plan. And uh, this plan, um, um, it is uh, an urban plan, uh, which is the base for the conservation plan and uh, the management plan. So um, in uh, the management plan, we have to, to have some uh, special criteria in order to have uh, a sustainable and uh, well-preserved preserved, um, uh, small towns and uh, villages. Um, and also uh, we have to, to manage the preservation, but not only the preservation, but the, the production base um, of uh, these uh, small towns and villages, as well as uh, the, the public space and um, the, the management of uh, tourist flows and uh, also the, um, uh, the, the right of uh, citizens in uh, their um, public space. Mm, the the question is uh, so 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 large. So uh, perhaps uh, I gave the, some uh, principal ideas, but uh, if you like more explication, I can continue speaking. <laughs> I think it's enough. Thank you, Doctor Sophia. And also, I can suggest I can suggest some uh, documents um, on this matter of uh, ECOMOS uh, documents, the, the, uh, the International Charter on, um, um, uh, on Towns and Villages. Uh, the, um, it is named uh, the Washington Charter, uh, 1987. Uh, um, uh, and uh, it was a pioneer text from ECOMOS on um, um, Towns and Villages. Uh, that was endorsed by the first uh, meeting of uh, ECOMOS in, on um, 64 
And uh, it was the eighth resolution of this meeting. Uh, it was the uh, institutional meeting of ECOMOS. So um, after some years, um, uh, the ECOMOS um, um, adopted the Washington Charter. And uh, the um, International Scientific uh, Committee on um, um, Cities, Towns and Villages adopt, uh, proposed to um, 17th General Assembly in Paris, the Valletta principles for safeguarding um, uh, cities, towns, and um, urban areas. Um, so in, in these documents, uh, there are many principles, many suggestions to, um, to people and uh, also uh, to, speci uh, to specialists in order to, to have a good um, preservation and safeguarding management of uh, historical towns and villages. I'm sorry. All right, Dr. Sophia, but thank you for that very comprehensive answer. Uh, there's this other question, uh, this time on the heritage and culture sector. So it's addressed to architect Kenneth. Um, is the culture and heritage sector currently being addressed in the Voluntary National Review or VNR of the Philippines? Okay, um, thank you very much, Jake. Um, I didn't expect that kind of question. Okay, but we'll answer that. So technically, um, currently we have the Philippine Development Plan and we did have a, a milestone there for including culture and heritage at chapter seven. And for the veteran and for the VNR or the Voluntary National Review, yes, um, um, there are scars of efforts according to our to a study by our former focal point. There, we saw that there is a scarcity of culture and heritage with regards to being addressed in the VNR. And currently, um, there are some efforts to, to, to really localize that. I, I don't know if it's okay to say this, but we, we got an email from as, a, as an NGO major group that we need to initiate a, an engagement with the national agencies who are um, handling the localization of the SDGs. And just to inform everyone, we, we are now trying to um, connect with the National Economic Development Authority since they are the ones who are handling the localization. Although, if I'm not mistaken, currently um, um, the heritage, which is at um, SDG 11, is not currently their priority goal, especially that they're going to have a, um, the Voluntary National Review for 2022. But we, as we have witnessed in this uh, this campaign launch, that SD, the heritage and culture is not only at SDG 11, but it has a lot of in, interlinkages into whole 70 SDGs. Therefore, that is something that we can, as an ICOMOS, as ICOMOS Philippines, can uh, pursue and uh, undertake with regards to the national agencies. And yes, we are we are not currently trying to connect with them. And if there are some of the agencies out there, let's say NEDA or DILG, we're, we're kind of giving you a love call here. So yeah, we're get in touch with you. And yeah, of course, our uh, our agency will be, um, how can I say this, will be on touch, of course, because culture and heritage, it is time, it is for due consideration that we add these to the agenda in making our, um, just our country sustainable in terms of heritage. Uh, Jake, uh, just I would like to add on, uh, if possible, is that okay? Uh, so the in terms of the VNR, so um, okay, I I want to say a jargon again. I know that the we are getting more and more with the jargons, but the, what the, um, Kenneth was uh, explaining was the voluntary national reviews. Now this is a national review that is um, submitted by the Philippines to the UN in the uh, implementation of the SDGs. Um, the ECMOS is also part of what we call as the Culture 2030 Goal Campaign, which has reviewed many uh, voluntary national reviews or VNRs before. And it has been identified that not a lot of countries actually highlight the power of culture and the power of heritage in, in the um, development and sustainable development, which is why we are advocating that um, cultural heritage is part of all parts of life. 
and uh, the intangible and tangible parts of life. And that should enable that kind of uh, rich uh, discussion on, on uh, sustainable development. Now, there are other ways of engaging. So for our colleagues here from the local government units, there is what we call also as a voluntary local reviews, which is created by cities or government units that wants to submit uh, these documents to the UN. And you can also highlight the issues that the, uh, or the, 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 the good things that you've been doing in, the, in uh, um, achieving the SDGs. Um, right now, the Philippines is uh, having its second review. The first one, I think, was in 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and now it will be in 2022. Um, oh, sorry, this is the third now, my mistake. I, I, I see that uh, NEDA has... Uh, uh, okay, so there is no... Uh, so for the moment, there are no uh, uh, cities in, the, um, in uh, the Philippines have, who have provided DLRs. And maybe uh, what we can also do is, uh, this can be also explained by Neda if they're uh, comfortable. Um, uh, Jake, I, I leave it to you. To, uh, uh, yes. Um, Ma'am Elaine Leilani Oro um, raised her hand, I saw from uh, the Zoom call kanina. Uh, if you'd like to ask your question, uh, please do. Uh, floor is yours. Ma'am Elaine. Okay, I think um, uh, yeah, I think um, yes, I think we can go to the next question. Okay. Um, this one's from the Zoom chat uh, from Mr. Philip Luke Manghihilot on heritage management. Uh, oh, sorry, Ma'am Elaine. Hello, can you hear me? Ah, yes, yes, I can hear you. Yes. Ah, okay. So I just can't turn on my camera right now, but uh, for everyone's knowledge, so we are, it's correct that we are preparing our third voluntary national review. Um, but I would just like to also recommend that um, if there are some data, and to clarify, so PSA is the one who is in charge of monitoring and reporting, and 11.4.2, which is on heritage, is part of those which are identified as tier two in terms of indicators was previously identified during the process for the voluntary national review in 2019. So it is included. However, UNESCO is the one who chose the priority indicators, which will ha be highlighted in the next reviews. We did have, uh, we, we did receive some uh, inquiry from ICOMOS for future meetings, and this is why I am here now, and to see how we can align with the group. For everyone's knowledge, uh, the next report shall be completed by quarter two of next year. So there's much work to be done. If ICOMOS or any of the bodies in here who represent a sector which has a data, then I would like to suggest that you communicate to PSA so you can be part of the citizen-generated data you can look into the PSA website and contact those persons involved in there. So this is for everyone's knowledge. Citizen-generated data are those data which can be taken from non-government actors, but your methodology has to be approved for purposes of comparison in the global landscape. Uh, from your messages earlier, I would also like to recommend that the team look further. I'm looking at um, your involvement in terms of the localization, of uh, the Mandan in effect of the Mandanas Garcia ruling. I'm not sure if you have uh, looked into that in detail, but there is much work to be done in that aspect. I think it will be meaningful if you can comment in the documents of the OTGO on how they will devolve the functions in terms of tourism to the local government. There will be local government planning units who will get more funding from the national government. So instead of it being done by national government agencies, it will be at the local level. There is uh, a lot of work or a lot of influence that you can do in terms of helping our LGUs uh, achieve the sustainable development goals. For further questions, you can reach out to me or we can discuss it in the future meetings. Thank you. 
Um, if I may add, uh, thank you very much, Ma'am Elaine, to actually first joining us here today. I didn't expect, of course, but yeah, indeed, uh, we're really thankful to Neda and Miss Elaine because we did um, started an engagement and we did get a reply and really appreciate that and looking forward for any um, official engagements through meetings. That's for me. Have a nice day. Uh, for me, I, I, I am quite, um, uh, it's quite good. Um, the, one of the discussions that we've had, I mentioned in my presentation in the focus group discussions with Ecomos Philippines was the, the national budgets for tourism. So I, I mentioned earlier that 24% uh, of uh, uh, GDP is coming from tourism in the 2019 survey. Uh, but the, uh, what we found with our discussions was that that money does not translate to uh, heritage conservation on the ground. So it is uh, separate. It is not like, um, uh, you know, it's like using the same site, but one doesn't transfer the money to the other to prolong the, the, the let's say, the protection of the site. So I think that is something that uh, it's good that the, now the budgets are going to the local governments that they can reallocate and I, uh, perhaps identify what are their priorities in, in terms of, let's say, heritage tourism and how can they... Uh, 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 protect more their, their sites. So th I think that's a good achievement. Um, and uh, I do hope that the um, um, other local government units, um, if you have that already, um, you should uh, also reach out to us so that uh, we can uh, see the possibilities of putting that, those case studies um, in, the, in our uh, policy guidance uh, document. All right. Uh, thank you, architects Gabriel and Kenneth. I think we have room for one last question. Uh, this one's from Philip Loop Manghihilot uh, from earlier in the Zoom chat on heritage management. So anyone can answer. Um, can I say something on? Oh, yes, because, uh, I think that um, uh, this uh, question was addressed to me. Um, if if I may. I can um, can proceed. Yes, Jay. Yes. So uh, the the methodology is always the same. Uh, we have to to decoding first the situation. That is mean to analyze to in, to uh, to report all the the features of uh, of the site. Um, secondly, we we uh, we can um, um, select our criteria for the preservation of site. Um, we need to know uh, what are our, our priorities about the, the situation. And um, uh, lastly, we have to establish all the system of planning um, of um, such uh, sites. Uh, as, I, um, as I told you first, we need to have um, a plan, an urban plan, it is uh, the same, an urban plan, and um, after that, a conservation plan, and, uh, in, um, um, an another plan concerning the, um, uh, the, the management plan on the end. So we need a complete system of planning. And uh, also we have to, to, to make some other um, um, research concerning the authenticity of the site, the integrity of the site, the, um, um, the, the limits of the site, and uh, to know all uh, the zones of uh, the, this uh, protected uh, or not protected uh, area. The methodology is always the same. Um, if you are speaking about uh, an industrial site um, or um, an urban site or an urban area or a settlement or a small archaeological site. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sophia. Yeah. Uh, and can I add in to that, Jake? So uh, there are examples in other places that industrial heritage has been has actually been transformed to um, uh, heritage sites as well. So, uh, for example, there's this place in Germany called uh, Solferine, which is um, uh, a site, uh, it was a coal mining site that was uh, derelict for a long, long, long time. 
but what the, the, they have done is uh, they've um, identified that because of the long history of coal mining, it was meant to be celebrated. And eventually they transformed it into a, a mixed use development, but the, the change the use, but at the same time celebrating the, the, uh, the long history of uh, coal mining. So it's now uh, considered as a World Heritage Site. And um, I think we have these uh, sites in the Philippines as well. You know, um, I think um, uh, Tiki, uh, the, the, um, there is an organization that looks into industrial heritage in the, uh, internationally and in the Philippines. But um, what I would suggest is, uh, as Col uh, Sophia mentioned, that there is a need for mapping because mm -hmm. sometimes you think that it is all uh, like, bad looking or like is it like modern or not modern or like you have to identify and the, the values that are part of the site and identify prioritize actions based on what you have seen and uh, um, and what you have mapped out so um, it is uh, the way to to do it as, as Sophia said thank you architect gab um Here's another question uh, from um, Carmencita Solis on education and their role in SDGs. Uh, she asked, how can schools contribute in the promotion of sustainable development goals in heritage? Um, anyone can answer. Dr. Sophia, would you like to? Um, it is uh, um, from the... Um... All, all the um, doctrinal texts of uh, ECOMOS referred, um, re reported that um, uh, it is very important to to um, to start the um, the sensibilization and the um, um, the sensibilization of the matters of um, heritage from the um, the first. Um, 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 years of, edu uh, of um, education. It is very important to insert the principles uh, for preserving um, uh, heritage and the importance of heritage in the schools. So um, we need to, um, to explain and uh, to, to make um, understandable from the beginning of uh, the education of uh, young people, um, all these uh, matters concerning uh, the the notion, the sense of uh, heritage, the sense of culture, uh, the need to uh, pre preserve and uh, safeguard uh, our identity, and so on. Uh, so um, we have to start the sensibilization of uh, um, uh, of community. Uh, from uh, from the education from the first time of uh, um, education from the third classes of um, education. Thank you, Dr. Sophia. Uh, and uh, we'd also like to thank everyone for your questions. Uh, that's all the time we have for this open forum. But we would like to invite you to send us additional questions here at this email address communications at ecommercephilippines.com. I'll be sending it in chat and we will get back to you on them. Uh, to officially conclude this campaign launch, here again is Dr. Laya. Dr. Laya, the floor is yours. Thank you for that, Jake. Uh, it was truly an honor to be given this assignment by the ECOMOS SDG Working Group. Uh, today, we were enlightened with international case profiles on how heritage practices have always been driving and enabling sustainable development. The lecture by Dr. Colonia provided powerful insights that can enrich and protect our precious heritage resources. We face many challenges such as urbanization, the erosion of identity, over tourism and disasters, hence the need for a transdisciplinary convergence and collaboration in the elaboration of the SDGs. Our speakers from the Philippines also led us to some wonderful ruminations today. We learned about the aspirations of this ECOMOS initiative from architect Kenneth, that we have an opportune time for inclusive and holistic synergies to solve sustainability challenges of Philippine heritage with measurable impacts and multidimensional perspectives. ECOMOS is currently consolidating localized case profiles with best practices that will guide heritage professionals at large 
and development actors at the national and local level, even enterprise and civil society, so that heritage practices may be aligned with the SDGs. From Gabriel Caballero, we were reminded that natural, cultural, intangible, intangible heritage all have inherent values that are important to sustainable development. Heritage is multidimensional generation and the mitigation of the effects of climate change. And heritage needs to be part of bigger conversations to be more meaningful to communities. After all, why limit heritage to only one subcomponent when it actually contributes to and may serve as an anchor for all the SDGs? Heritage also presents an opportunity for all development actors to cooperate. It is no longer confined to nostalgia or the grandeur of a noble past. And further, development transcends infrastructure and consumer production. And so we welcome a paradigm shift where natural and cultural heritage and people's holistic well being are all intertwined. We welcome contributors so that we can learn more about localized conversations about best heritage practices and solutions. Let us resound the clarion call to develop continuous data driven heritage research, as well as amplifying our interpretation and communication efforts. On the other hand, what are the cracks and fissures in our efforts to better understand the concrete steps that need to be enacted? From the discussions today and the questions and the answers, even in the Zoom chat box, there seems to be an urgent need for capacity building in which educational institutions, LGUs, national government agencies, and even GOCCs that specialize in training can all co-create programs for heritage education. Perhaps it may also be productive to closely examine the concept of Bayanihan and revisit our current structures of mutual support. We encourage the state and local governments to continue mobilizing financial resources, continue capacitating its plantilla to be an aggregator and continue fulfilling its role as an enabler and supporter of multi-sectoral heritage initiatives so that we all of us stakeholders may co-create genuine and timely solutions even before 2030. And so I close this launch by reiterating the sense of urgency to work towards these goals. We need to break out of our silos and cooperate with actors at various layers of the local. We need to hold government accountable. We need the support of government. And hopefully the partnerships we foster will remain indelible and the solutions we generate will endure. This is just the beginning of ECOMOS Philippines' efforts in localizing the 17 SDGs. We call upon heritage practitioners, advocates, civil society, and government leaders, and every Filipino in mobilizing our Philippine heritage for its inclusive and sustainable development. Maging kapamana. Thank you all. This has been Laya Bukiren, your moderator. Thank you, Dr. Laya, for that closing statement. Today truly is a momentous day for Philippine heritage. With that, we will now close Pamana 2030 campaign launch. As some final reminders, you can find out more about iCommerce Philippines here. Please also take the time to answer our post-event evaluation form. We would greatly appreciate your input on how we can improve our future events. Just scan the QR code and I will be sending the link in chat. We would also like to thank all of our attendees for joining us at this event. I hope you are able to download our Pamana 2030 Zoom background. So please join us as we take a final photo. We seem to have a lot of participants, so I'm, I'd like to ask everyone to hold your smiles as I take a screenshot. So first slide, smile. Uh, is everyone's video on? Oops. All right. So first slide, smile. Three, two, one. There are eight slides, so <laughs> let's all just be patient, please. Uh, Three, two, one. So third slide. Ah, there are five slides na lang pala. Pardon me. Uh, three, two, one. Third slide. 
Uh, smile, everyone. Three, two, one. Fourth slide. Three, two, one. And last slide. Three, two, one. So uh, to close, we would, um, this is just the beginning for Pumana 2030. So let's watch a video of our fellow heritage advocates in inviting you again in the decade of action for the SDGs and the Philippine heritage. Maging Kapamana Sama-sama nating sporta Pamana 2030 Ikumos Philippines This probably show for the Philippine heritage is a driver and enabler of a sustainable development Pamana 2030 Ikumos Philippines Uh, once again, we at iCommerce Philippines would like to thank everyone for taking the time to attend our Pamana 2030 campaign launch. Mga Kapamana, see you again next time in our iCommerce Philippines events. Have a nice day to all! <music>